Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter Three, Video Three. Today's topic is projectile motion, Part One. The objectives for today is to know a projectile is two-dimensional motion. Understand x and y components must be treated separately. Be able to solve projectile motion problems. A projectile moves in a vertical plane. That means it's two-dimensional. That plane contains the initial velocity v naught. So remember, v naught is a vector quantity, has magnitude and a direction. The path of a projectile is called its trajectory. Its trajectory depends only on v naught and on the effect of gravity. So for now, we ignore air resistance. In our daily lives, we see a lot of examples of projectiles. For a, a battered baseball, a thrown football, a bullet shot from a rifle, or a package dropped from an airplane, they are all projectiles. So a projectile is a combination of a horizontal and a vertical motion. You can see from this diagram, in the horizontal direction, the projectile travels Acceleration is zero. So for each equal time interval, the projectile travels the equal distance. Now in a vertical direction, projectile is like a free fall object. It goes up, then comes down. So in a vertical direction, acceleration is constant. It's negative g. It's negative because it's downward. Velocity changes by the equal amount during equal time interval. So for each second, the velocity changes by negative 9.8 meters per second. So it, it, as it goes up, velocity decreases, becomes zero at the top. Then it increases in a uh, downward direction by the same amount, 9.8 meters per second, when it comes down. At the very top, the trajectory, the, uh, at the very top of the trajectory, the projectile has zero vertical velocity, but acceleration is the same. It's still negative g. So at each point, the projectile is a combination of horizontal and vertical motion. So this v naught is v naught at x plus v naught at y. It's a vector addition. Over here, too, at t equals to 1, v1 equals to v1x plus v1y. At the very top, vy, v2y equals to 0. So v2 equals to v2x. And similarly, it's the same thing. As you can see, there's it's symmetrical in a way. Horizontal and vertical motion are independent of each other. Let's take a look at this um, picture. This picture shows the red ball is dropped from rest, and the yellow ball is projected horizontally at the same time. Look at this picture. The picture shows both balls have the same y components, same y position, same y velocity, same y acceleration, despite having different x positions and x velocities. So x and y they do not affect each other. Let's look at the equations. So since projectiles acceleration is constant, so we can uh, use constant acceleration, the equations for constant acceleration to solve project, uh, projectile problems. So here, uh, the picture shows a person is kicking a soccer ball. So this soccer ball is moving as a projectile if we ignore um, Air resistance, its acceleration is constant. <coughs> the initial, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> initial velocity components are this v naught x equals v naught cosine alpha naught, v naught y equals v naught sine alpha naught. This is from uh, Sokotoa. If we take the initial position as the origin, that means at time t equals to 0, we said x naught equals to y naught equals to 0, then its position 
x and y can be written as follows because acceleration in the x direction equals to zero so that becomes v naught cosine at any time equals v naught y times t minus one half gt squared because acceleration in the y direction is negative g. Then we can substitute v naught y equals v naught sine In the velocity vector, okay, so its position r the where the distance from the center of the projectile we can figure it out use Pythagorean theorem. The velocity vector is v x equals to v naught x because v x is constant and v y equals to v naught y minus g t. So we can substitute v naught x and v naught y accordingly. To find velocity, the magnitude of velocity, we can use Pythagorean theorem and use the uh, tangent alpha to find its direction of motion. The path of projectile is parabolic. So we can derive an equation for the uh, trajectory's shape in terms of f. Then substitute t into the y equation. So y equals tangent alpha naught times f squared times cosine squared alpha, or cosine alpha naught whole thing squared and times x squared. See the alpha naught is constant, v naught is constant. So this is constant, the second term is also constant. We can change this equation to bx minus cx squared. In this equation, both b and c are constant. This is the equation for parabola. So this is the equation of a parabola in projectile motion with our simple model, the simple model is to ignore air resistance and treat a projectile as a little a particle. The trajectory of a projectile is always par, uh, parabolic. Now let's talk about the effect of air resistance. So here is a baseball's ideal trajectory with no air resistance. This blue one is with air resistance. So as you can see, <clears throat> cumulative, uh, cumulative effect can be large. So both the peak height and the distance traveled will decrease. Another thing is trajectory ceases to be parabolic. So this line, the blue path is not parabolic anymore. Here are the pictures for a bounce ball, a bouncing ball. As you can see, the bounce ball becomes less and less high that is because it lost energy due to air resistance um, this graph on the bottom it shows the trajectory of volcanic uh, volcanic splashes the trajectory is not parabolic due to air resistance here is an example let's consider the falling skier what is her acceleration at a point G, H, and I after she flies off the ramp? So when she flies off the ramp, she's in air. So if we ignore air resistance, that means she's in free fall. Look at another example. So a body projected horizontally. A motorcycle stunt rider rides off the edge. His velocity is horizontal with magnitude of nine meters per second. Find, find a motorcycle's position, distance from the edge. First, let's see what's given. It is given to you Initial velocity also given to you alpha naught equals to zero because it's uh, projected horizontally. So v naught x should be nine and v naught y equals to zero. 
Let's see position vector. X equals V naught X times T, that is because X equals to zero. So the position at 0.5 seconds is 4.5 meters in the X. The position in the Y at 0.5 seconds is negative 1.2 meters per second. As you can see from the diagram, it's negative because it's below the horizontal line, below your zero. The distance from the edge of the cliff, we can use Pythagorean theorem to find a distance. This is the distance from the zero to this point at 0.5 meters, uh, at 0.5 seconds, sorry. Velocity, Vx equals to V naught x because Vx is constant. Now Vy equals V naught y minus gt, that is because Ay equals negative g. V naught y equals to zero, so that will give us Vy is negative 4.9 meters per second. It's negative because it's traveling downward. So V, the vector V, velocity is a vector, is we can use the vector notation or um, unit vector notation. It's just Vxi plus Vyj. Vy is negative 4.9 and Vx is 9. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.